Father, thank you for the, the privilege it is to come together. Lord, thank you for the time we can spend in your word. Father, I pray for your help now as we continue, that you just draw near and you be teaching us. Father, I pray for the things we've heard this morning, that you just write them on our hearts. Lord, help us to trust you, help us to believe you when you say something, you don't lie. You tell us the truth every time. And I, I pray you'd help us to take that on board. I help you, pray you'd help us to take Lord, the reality of what Jesus did for us and paying everything. You'd help us to take that on board this morning. I just pray for your help now as well that you draw near. Lord, help me in my words and, and use them, I pray, in every single heart in this place. Let us commit ourselves to you and to your hands and your care. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Right, I want to start off, I'm just going to read out a few quotes about evangelism and about mission. There really isn't a whole lot of point in doing this. It's not really related to what, what I'm talking about, but I thought I'd read some of them. Some of them are quite cool. They should go up on the screen behind you. And then I'm going to get to one quote that I'm going to kind of, it's going to be the springboard for what I'm going to talk about for this session. But anyway, let's we'll read through them. Some of them are quite cool. In fact, all of them are quite cool. John Wesley said these words, Give me 100 preachers who fear nothing but sin and desire nothing but God, and I care not a straw whether they be clergymen or laymen. Such alone will shake the gates of hell and set up the kingdom of heaven on earth. I thought that was cool. You know, I know we're sitting in a room of university students. I did a degree, but it really doesn't matter how clever you are. It doesn't matter how many degrees, you can have 10, 15, 20 degrees. If you, if you love God and you fear, I don't know, fear sin, you hate sin, because God hates sin, then God will use you to shake the gates of hell. That's, that's the reality. The second one I've got here is kind of, I have no idea who this guy is, and I've never heard of anyone called Curry before. But um, <laughs> no offense to the guy, whoever he is. But this, this quote, I like the quote. If your gospel isn't touching others, it hasn't touched you. And that thing is a little bit of what we're talking about today. You know, if it hasn't got planted deep down in your heart, then it's not going to touch other people. When it does, it's just going to overflow and it's going to reach out to the people around us. John Piper, I love listening to his sermons. He's really good. His books are quite complicated, but get hold of them and try and go through them if you can. He said, missions is not the ultimate goal of the church. Worship is. Missions exists because worship doesn't. That's what we're trying to do when we're doing evangelism. We're trying to create people who worship God. We're trying to create people who love him. Not just, it's not just an end in itself. It's to get people coming in, get into, people into the kingdom and be people who are worshippers. Next one, Keith Green, another one of the people I love his songs. Awesome music. If you haven't got into it yet, get into it. Get past the, the hairstyle and the beard and listen, <laughs> quality stuff. He said, I'd rather have people hate me with the knowledge that I tried to save. And that's something, that's quite hard. It's the sort of thing Keith Green would say. But I'd rather have people hate me in the knowledge that I tried to save and rather than just let them slide on by and they love me. I'd rather have people hate me. That's, that's quite intense. But that's important. It's an important attitude to have when we're going out and doing evangelism. Uh, C.T. Studd, I think he was, he was a cricketer, England cricketer, went, gave everything away. I can't remember where he went. Did he go to China? Africa. Um, he said, it's quite a long one, let us not glide through this world and then slip quietly into heaven without having blown the trumpet loud and long for our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Let us see to it that the devil will hold a thanksgiving service in hell when he gets the news of our departure from the field of battle. That's a cool quote. But when you leave this earth, and when you're walking through those gates, if they even exist, when you're in heaven, the devil's going to be rejoicing. He's going to say, yes, that one's gone. That's cool. I want, I want that to be me. <laughs> and all of us, actually, to have that kind of thing. Charles Spurgeon, you may have heard this one. <clears throat> but again, he said, if sinners be damned, at least let them leap to hell over our bodies. If they will perish, let them perish with our arms about their knees. Let no one go there unwarned and unprayed for. That's, again, it's quite intense. But let people jump over you to get into hell. Don't let them go past. Those, those quotes, I love them. You have copies of them afterwards if you want. Give your folk copies. But this is the one, and you may have heard this. This one. The next one. Put it up, Dave. The first time I heard this, I think it's on like a DC Talk CD or something. It says, preach the gospel at all times use words if necessary. Now, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands who agrees with that, because we could put us in an awkward position. But I want to use that as a springboard for what I want to talk about. Preach the gospel at all times, fair enough, absolutely. That's what Jesus told us to do. 
preach the gospel to every creature. When there's a creature about, preach the gospel to it. Fair enough? Preach the gospel at all times. Then use words if necessary. Now, I know and I get kind of the where that's coming from. And the lifestyle needs to be there. But I really, I've got to say, I don't understand the tension that people hold between those two things. People talk about, you, you, you mean you don't need to use words to get someone into the kingdom. You don't need to use words to get someone to be saved. You can just live out a life of, of like before them of love and live a life of whatever holiness and perfection and you can get them into the kingdom that way. You know what? I don't agree. And that's where I want to start. I've called this, this talk, I've kind of called it Essentials. I'm going to give three things to you that for, for evangelism, just for, for life basically actually, for, but for evangelism we need we have to have. There's no ifs or buts, there's no question about it. God says, and you know, it's not just me thinking that this, whoever said this quote isn't quite on the right wavelength. It's God says it. And I'm going to give you three things that we need as Christians when we're, when we're doing evangelism. And the first one goes, spins right off that quote. And if you turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 10, We'll start reading at verse 13. And, you know, it just it says these things really clear and really plain, I think. You've probably heard verse 13 of Romans chapter 10 quoted all kinds of times, all kinds of places. You probably know it off by heart. It says, For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's an awesome verse in and of itself. We could just stay there all day and just talk about the guarantee that, that God gives. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's not whoever calls on the name of the Lord and is good enough afterwards or as good enough before or has done this or done that. Whoever calls, whoever humbles himself, they will be saved. No question. But anyway, that's not the topic exactly right now. Verse 14, then a progression starts. And walk through it as we read it. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then Paul asks the question, how then shall they call? So the goal of us doing evangelism that the people would cry out to God and they would call on his name. How are they going to call on him in whom they've not believed? Now, Paul doesn't answer the question for us, but you can answer it yourself. How are they going to call on someone they haven't believed in? They're not going to, are they? They can't. Because if they're not believed on him, they're not, they're not going to cry out to him. So, the, the answer, the rhetorical answer, if you like, that Paul wants us to give is, how are they going to call on him they're not believed in? Then they're not going to. It can't happen. It's not going to happen. Next phrase, he goes on and moves down. He's almost moving backwards in the progression. How shall they believe in him and who have they not heard? They can't. If you haven't heard of someone, how can you believe in someone? This is, it doesn't, doesn't work, does it? If you've not heard someone being spoken about, you, you, can't, you can't believe in them. Because you just don't know. There's no chance. It keeps on going. It says, how shall they hear without a preacher? So how are they going to hear the message? How are they going to hear this person, the name of the Lord, who is Jesus himself? How are they going to, how are they going to hear about him unless someone tells them? Now you might stand back and say, well, what about kind of dreams and visions and stuff? Fair enough, that does happen. But very small percentage of the time. This is what God has said for us. This is what he's laid out. He says, how are they going to hear unless someone tells them? Unless someone goes out and as a preacher... And by preacher, it doesn't just mean someone who stands up in front of hundreds of people and, and proclaims stuff like that. But who, how are they going to hear without a preacher? Can that be one on one? Yes, it can. One on five? Can that be on the doors? Can that be in the open air? Can that be your, your housemates, your course mates, your whatever mates? Yes, it can. How are they going to hear? They're, they're not. They're not going to hear something that someone isn't willing to tell. The last question he asked is how should they preach unless they're sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. So Paul goes through a progression and he says, you've got to preach it. You've got to say it. You've got to, you've got to talk to them. And you know, I was thinking as I was sitting there, kind of preparing for this morning and thinking what I was going to say, I, I wondered, and I know I've already said, we're not giving you techniques. And I was like, am I given a technique? Not really. And if, if there are any techniques today, then this is it. But it's only three words. The technique that God has given for doing evangelism is basically just open your mouth. 